Today you're going to learn how to draw characters holding rifles and maybe get some tips for characters holding any kind of weapon as some of the techniques we'll be using here can be applied to other situations. But today will be that simplified tutorial. It'll be done in Photoshop and then you know we'll play around with some filters to just make the overall illustration look even better once we render it after it's done. But the first core thing would be putting that foundation together, getting the skeletons, the mannequin of the drawing to do exactly what you want, like a dynamic pose of your character holding a rifle and potentially firing it. I partnered up with PUBG Mobile to bring this video to you guys. They're releasing their new map update with a new feature that allows players customize their guns freely. We're going to be using a gun that I customized inside the game as a model for today's tutorial. I'm going to be drawing my own ideal gun skin just as you guys can create it in the game yourselves. Now right off the bat, I must admit, I actually don't play these games often, especially if they're mobile because I'm thinking it's mobile, it can't be that good, you know. So I put it in my iPad and it's actually pretty, like mobile games today are reaching some level because I didn't expect this level of gameplay or graphics to be on a mobile device. So everything looks pretty good, the controls look pretty good and you can actually have a lot of fun with this. The user interface, the customization controls were also pretty easy to navigate through and overall it was just a cool experience. Regardless of whether you're a vet or a newbie with these kind of things. So sometimes it can feel overwhelming. I like the fact that it's kind of easy and self-explanatory. Well, I was just messing around with the controls here and the customization abilities here. I think it's pretty cool to make your own stuff within the game. And we're just going to be using that as a model and we'll get to that. So again, shout out to PUBG Mobile. If you guys would like to support the channel, use my link in the description to go get the game for yourself and test out the customization capabilities as well as just enjoying the fun within the game. You guys, regardless of whether you're a first timer or not, can use this tutorial as a foundation of build on, applying principles we use here onto other stuff that might be similar. As you can see, I'll be using reference from the PUBG gun. And in general, I'm using reference with the intent to no longer use it, right? So you apply that same mentality to anything you learn, at least I do, whether it's drawing hands, body proportions, poses, the list goes on. I kind of draw and use reference and learn from it. It's almost like you're studying the reference and then over time, you don't need it as much until you don't need it at all. Same goes for guns because you'd be learning about guns in the process as well. So the more guns you draw, the more you can actually make up your own guns, the more you understand how they're put together, how they're broken apart, their naming structure, all of that will help you create your own guns, especially if you're creating something for the modern world depending on where you're getting your reference from do a lot of futuristic sci-fi guns then you're going to be good at that over time so just get inspired in general here we're using the PUBG gun so that's where we're getting our inspiration from when putting it together i like to see things as simple shapes and then i'm morphing it into other things and just to make sure it's in line with the reference itself i'm seeing them as simple shapes and then breaking them down and i'm just adding other shapes to it making the tweaks that need to be made so that it's the same with the gun that I'm getting reference from. So we use simple shapes and then we added detail, morph them a little bit, add the more shapes onto it and morph that and that's how we did it. But for the actual pose, I'm gonna simplify it into a sketch of basic shapes, putting all that detail on a separate layer. I don't need to, but I'm just gonna. I'm using the scope, right? If the character is actually gonna use the scope on the gun, so I'm using the scope to figure out where his eye is gonna be and just gauging that angle, that dynamic angle. Usually things are a little more dynamic when it's maybe a little pointing towards the camera, there's some foreshortening, some form of perspective going on. It just makes everything feel a little more dynamic. There are other elements to it, but just stay with me here. Once I figure out where his eye is gonna be, I have a good idea of where his head overall is gonna be. And again, same rules apply, using a basic shape to figure out where that's going to be. One eye open for the one using the scope and the other eye closed, doing his precision shooting here. Everybody getting got. Sometimes you can use a box and put the head inside the box to telegraph where the head is facing. And then you figure out all the eye stuff later when you're adding in details. But we have the head looking through a scope, again, using simple shapes for his ear, the head, anything necessary. And we have a couple guidelines to also help us see where he's facing. Then after the head, we can figure out the position of his hands. Once you have the gun figured out, then everything else can now come together because we know where his hands are going to be. One's going to be on the trigger and the other is going to be holding the gun. So we can just already put the hands where they're supposed to be. 
right now this is not a hand tutorial so I won't go into too much detail about drawing the hands per se but I'll touch on the topic a little bit you have the hands one in the trigger and the other one holding it well you also want to keep in mind the body proportion so you want to make sure that the hands are in proportion with the head and also in proportion with the gun because you don't want the gun to look too small or anything at all to look off unless that's what you want to do because again at the end of the day style is something that comes into play so it depends on your art style to a degree so now just figuring out the fingers and how he's going to hold it just note that this is just one way obviously there's several ways that you can see when you just go to Pinterest or Google images and you'll see a lot of people holding rifles in various ways so this is one way to hold it. figuring out the fingers the fingernails and all of that making sure that the fingers are in order you have the middle finger the longest one the pinky smallest all that good stuff the thumb behind the rifle because we don't get to see it from from this angle because of how the character is holding the gun or the rifle little tweaks here and there to make the sketch a little clearer to understand and putting his finger literally on the trigger now the shoulder positions that's one you got to figure out as well sometimes this can give off some form of body language to see how comfortable the character is, confident the character is, or focused. It all depends on you. We have those kind of curved lines coming down to show that he's kind of crouching just a little bit, right? So we don't see that much of his neck from this angle because there is some foreshortening going on where his head and the rifle are blocking the little parts of the neck that we would normally see. So this is an example, you have the head pretty normal, that's how it would be, you see the neck, you see the shoulders. But when they're kind of crouching or bending or doing something dynamic and some kind of action pose, usually they'll kind of tilt down. I have the circles there to let you know where the shoulders are or the joints, they'll then form the arms from there. But he's kind of tilting down so we don't get to see his neck as much. And that is, and that's why you have those curved lines that look like they're literally piercing his head from one end to the other. Again, there are, that's just a simple, straightforward illustration of it. You can do a lot of dynamic things, action poses when the characters are crouching in some way. They just look not necessarily cooler, but look like they're about to pounce and do something dope. So his left shoulder, we're gonna see a lot more than the right shoulder because the right shoulder is being blocked more so by the right. We're gonna connect his hands to his shoulders, but first they have to connect at his elbow. So where's that gonna be? Again, depending on the pose of the character I'm just gonna have this one be a little simpler because that arm on the trigger is going to block the end of the rifle we're gonna draw that we're gonna draw that one first and figure that out and then connect the rest it's gonna create some foreshortening so you want to draw what we will see first before you draw anything else so when we draw the forearm then it'll just make things easier to connect the dots now for his right arm even though we're gonna see it kind of come down a little bit it's not gonna be straight down it's also kind of bending away from the rifle there is also some foreshortening perspective going on there so you have to be cautious of that but again we're gonna see more of the forearm than the rest of the arm so we draw that first and then connect the dots this technique this technique kind of makes things easier to understand what's going on in more complex poses. Now, how is he crouching? Gonna figure out his spine. So we're figuring out the position of his spine and torso. And so I just have a little line there kind of to help give you guys a guideline. You can kind of experiment with that, but based off of that spine, it can kind of let you know how you wanna draw the rest of his torso and then connect it to the legs. So if you notice, we're going step by step by step with this drawing. It's almost like I don't even know completely how his pose is going to be. I'm just kind of making it up as I go. I'm experimenting, trying new things as I'm kind of adding to it and adding to it. So he's crouching a little bit, but he's not completely crouching like knees completely bent. He's just kind of cautious, bent a little bit. Call me out here trying to catch a body. The facial expression, facial positions, all those kind of things are also things you think about. Again, uh, we're gonna have one eye open for sure. We can close the other one. Maybe he wants to be precise with the shooting. It all depends on the character. It depends on what you want to do. Sometimes you can draw characters shooting, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like this. It could also be a rifle, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like this. Have the eye, one eye closed, having him be a little angry. Oh, gang, dropping people in PUBG Mobile. I have other videos on facial expressions that you guys can go check out. I also have videos on the step here where we're sketching and putting this together and we'll eventually color it. And there's a video that goes into more detail about all of that. And there will be more of it. So if you're new to the channel, 
Don't forget to like, subscribe. Right now we're just adding details because we figured out the hard part. I ended up making the character based off another serious idea that I have where the character is kind of like a Punisher type character and it's gonna have like some really psychological twist to it. I'd say similar to like a Fight Club or a Mr. Robot or Enemy. If you've ever seen any of those movies or TV shows, you know what I'm talking about. But with like a touch of the Punisher. It's not as developed as my other series like Apple Black or Bakasi. For those who don't know, I'm a published creator. You can check out my comics. They'll also all be linked in the description. Everything you can possibly need will be in the description. Social media, links goes on. So the character is kind of based off of that with a, <laughs> with a little bit of Action Hank from Dexter. Shout out to anybody who knows what Action Hank is. And now you can see me try out, you know, other poses. It's the same thing. Simple shape, we know where the gun is, we know where the hand is. So let's say it's doing something different. Let's say it's say hello to my little friend kind of pose. We just connect that because of the arm, we know where the elbow is, then we know where the shoulder is, and then we know where the, the torso is gonna be. Then we're figuring out the other hand arm because now we know where the hand is gonna be, we know where the, the trigger of the other gun is gonna be, then we can fill out the other dots and put more shades in there, more, more shapes and all that stuff. And we know where the shoulder is, so we know where the neck is, and then we know where the head is. And then we just, you know, fooling around, fooling around, fooling around. Say hello to my little friend, you're welcome. Again, I call it the connect the dot method. Quick tip for those drawing guns, the, you know, the hilt holder, whatever thing is never straight down. It's always kind of slanting backwards. And then we know what the trigger is, so we know what one finger is, and then we have the others kind of wrapped that way. And the pinky kind of pops out just a little bit. Then from the thumb, we kind of know where you have that little drumstick round thing for the fingers. And that's like an easy way, easy thing to remember if you're drawing like the trigger from that angle. But I'll have a different video that goes into drawing hands, holding things, and I'll save that for another day. Now, we just ink. Again, I have a video that goes into how I ink and put things together. If you wanna ink things that are straight, one way to do it in Photoshop, and you guys can use these methods in any software, like a Clip Studio Paint would be a good one too as well. But if you hit, if you use the brush, and you tap on one spot and then you hold shift and tap on another it's just going to connect and draw a straight line so that's for if you're drawing your gun and you want some really structured straight lines you can get you can get it that way but here i'm just adding in the line work putting in the mood the tone the shading the highlights again i have a video that goes into more detail with all this stuff and then i'll put in the flats and then i start playing around with the filters now we're actually putting the gun skin from PUBG. I'm literally using as reference, there are ways to use the eyedropper tool to just click and then fill in the other drawing. And then I'm manually putting in spots here. I have the whole gun, at least the parts that I want to color in, I have that selected. And now I'm just playing around with it to look like the gun straight out of PUBG. Basically the gun skin that we created in the game. Remember, this is a new feature, guys. Wasn't here before, it's here now. Able to customize your own gun. This is the one I did. And we're having fun with it. Overall, I like how it came out. I've always been a fan of, you know, characters that just go berserk and like heavy artillery, really know what they're doing. Really big fan of like the Punisher and stuff like that. So now we're just coloring appropriately, putting some highlights in the gun, giving it a little bit of a feather at the bottom. It really makes everything pop. Made him a really muscular dude. One you do not want to mess with. So I'm using my brush for the gun flash, and then I'm gonna give it a little bit of a blur, and then I'm gonna give him and the overall drawing, the overall character, a motion blur, just to make him, you know, vibrate. If you're like spraying fools, you'd be vibrating a little bit, you know, you'd be shaking a little bit. So I have the blur, and then I'll mask that layer and have some parts be blurry and some parts be a little clearer. The gun flash itself will be blurry as well. And then I use my whole anime filter thing at the end to just make the overall illustration come together. Again, I have several videos on this. I highly recommend you guys check out my channel if you're new to this video and see all those things for yourself. And after that, a couple more filters here and there using some adjustment layers and there and boom, we're done.
remember guys we partnered up with PUBG Mobile to bring this video to you guys if you want to support the channel use my link in the description to go get the game test out the customization capabilities with the gun skins and just have fun with the game overall shout outs to the three and a half people that made it to the end of this video i know a lot of you guys watch this video hopefully you guys get turned into subscribers please if you want to support the channel another way is to like these videos help out with the engagement and subscribe hit that bell so you stay notified each time i upload absolutely anything turn on all notifications all that good stuff would be greatly appreciated it's been swell guys check out my other videos this is white manga and i'm out